Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reactions each and every day. Um, we also have a second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. You guys can hit that and enjoy our weekly vlogs and don't forget to subscribe. We've got a podcast where we have some amazing conversations. My boyfriend and I like talking about different things and we like giving our opinions and we would also like to hear what you have to say about whatever we talk about. So feel free to comment. Uh, we drop the visuals on our second YouTube channel, we drop the audio on these channels as well, but you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, if I'm forgetting anything, you can find them in the uh, description uh, somewhere on our channel. Um, we also have a Patreon, so you guys can feel free to become members and we we'll really appreciate. Uh, a big shout out to the person that suggested this, thank you very much. And a big shout out to our subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys are doing alright. And I wish you a great day ahead. And may you stay blessed. So today as you can tell from the title. I'll be reacting to Didat versus Douglas. Crucifixion fact or fiction. Uh, before I get into this video. I'd like to ask you guys. Check out my new blog. I was posting from the 1st to the 6th. Uh, to the 6th. Uh, just check it out. And let me know what you think about my posts so far i really really appreciate uh, so without wasting time let's get into the video let me correct dr douglas <laughs> the difference between version and translation you see the the christian scholars and missionaries are trying to confuse the muslims with the term that version and translation means one and the same thing it doesn't you have the, in Christendom the Roman Catholic version of the Bible, the Douay or Reims version. That version has 73 books inside. 73 books. The one that the Protestant world upholds is the King James version of the Bible. This version has 66 books. Seven books less. Now you see, it's not just translation. It is not a choice of words. When the Muslim says, translation, he means translation. Yusuf Ali, Daryabadi, uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, Maududi. Each and every one of these are translations. The difference is in the choice of words. Synonymous words, terms, different words are being used to translate a certain word according to the person's understanding or grasp of the language. That's a translation. But when seven books are thrown out of a book of God, those seven books, according to Brother Jimmy Swaggart, he said, he said they are spurious, those seven books. These scholars say that they are apocrypha. I'm asking what is apocrypha? Apocrypha is a technical term for saying doubtful authority. In other words, it's not the word of God. So the Protestants say no. Then Dr. Douglas is a Protestant. He doesn't accept those seven books as the word of God. If you do, then you are a Roman Catholic. <laughs> then, he said the most accurate we go to the Greek scriptures, and the most accurate rendering of the scriptures is the RSV. That is what your scholars say. 32 scholars of the highest eminence in America, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they produce the RSV, Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And they say beautiful thing about the King James Version, which every Christian takes an oath by, including Jimmy Swaggart. This is the book he uses. This is the book he sells. Now, they say, the revisers, that this book, the King James Version, has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision. So they revised it. So they threw out, leave out the word begotten. You were going to the Greek scriptures. Hmm, I don't know Greek. But the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, the bedrock of Christendom, Christianity, because what is the dispute? We say God is one, he say God is one. But they say that God is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So we are at variance. 
we are at variance. Now, that verse in the Trinity is the only place in this Bible. I don't know whether it is in his Bible, the Greek. He didn't say which version he's holding. But the bulk of Christendom, this is the one they have in their hands. And the verse is in first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And it is thrown out as a fabrication out of the RSV by your scholars. So that's a version. It's thrown out as a fabrication, adulteration. Then the ascension of Jesus. The only places in the Gospels where it occur is Mark chapter 16, verse 19, that he ascended into heaven. Luke chapter 24, verse 51, that he ascended into heaven. They're also thrown out as fabrications. Now, that is version. You see, this is not saying that the translation. It's not translation. Things that were supposed to be not there, they threw it out, and honesty demands that you do. So that is the difference between a version and a translation. <laughs> Dr. Douglas. Do you believe the Old Testament to be the whole of the Word of God? If your answer is yes, do you say that Jesus was cursed because he was hanged to death? I'm sorry, let me repeat the question because I thought I misunderstood it. Do you believe in the Old Testament to be the whole Word of God? Yes, I believe the Old Testament to be the Word of God. I do not believe it to be the totality of the Word of God. But that, I, as I see the question, is, is not what's being asked. If your answer is yes, which it is, do you say that Jesus was cursed because he was hanged to death, as the Old Testament said? The New Testament definitely says Jesus was crucified or was hanged. And from the perspective of the Jews, yes, he was cursed. He became a curse for you and me. In effect, taking the curse of sin and the punishment for sin upon himself. It's not that the Christian comes along and says a curse on Jesus. It says that the Christian says, or I as a Christian say, I better not speak for all Christians. I as a Christian say, Jesus bore the curse of my sin. The Jews treated Jesus as one they viewed as accursed or cursed, and they killed him. Because they felt he was false, he was not what they expected, but God in fact had in mind his death and his resurrection, and out of that curse, a blessing. Mr. D. Death, if Christ showed the disciples that he hadn't died, that he did not die, why would they go forth preaching he had died and maintain this story of their own martyrdoms? If Christ showed the disciples that he hadn't died, why would they go forth preaching that he had died? I do not read into the scripture that they started preaching. You know, his immediate disciples that Christ had died. What they were telling is that he's alive, that he's alive, that he's alive. And it was an anticlimax to the idea that they had that the man was killed on the cross. That was their experience because they were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses of the happening. So now comes Jesus and he demonstrates to them that he's there. He's the very same Jesus that was before eating broiled fish and honeycomb and going and traveling with them ever in hiding so they said no the man is alive we expected him to have died he hadn't died so that was the conviction that god saved him and that is what they were preaching this idea that he died for the sins of mankind it doesn't seem to occur to me because this is against the law of god almighty where he says the soul that sinneth it shall die this is the law of god that the one that sins that, this, that is, that soul shall die. And the son shall not be the iniquity of the father. Meaning, whatever father Adam did, 
and Mother Eve did, he says, the son will not bear the iniquity, the sin of the father. Neither shall the son bear the, the father bear, the son bear the iniquity of the father. He says, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. This is the law of God, that whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever evil thing the evil man does, he gets punished for it. But if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. This is the law of God for all eternity. He does not take an innocent man to pay for the guilty. This is against his justice. Doctor was talking about the justice of God, the mercy of God. I said, what kind of mercy and justice is this? That he can't punish the evil mongers, the sinners, so he takes his own son and he gets him crucified. Love, you call that love? Killing an innocent man, his own innocent son? Amazing, amazing type of reasoning, logic. The God of the Bible, as well as the Quran, the Bible says, Jesus, uh, in the book of Isaiah, said, I forgive sins for my own sake. And I will not rem remember your sins. In other words, once he forgives you, he's not asking you for blood of sheep or goat or lamb, nor of his son, but he says, I forgive sins for my own sake, and once I've forgiven, I don't remember it. It's all blotted out. This is the law of God in the Bible and the teaching of Jesus, where Jesus Christ he says, he says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. In other words, the way I carry my responsibility, you carry yours. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus says, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no heaven for you, Jesus says to his disciples, unless you are better than the Jew. And I'm asking, how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? Mr. Douglas, this one is for you. Christians claim that Jesus, peace be upon him, is God. My question is, did Jesus claim himself as the God? Did he say, I am God? Or did he ask his followers to worship me? One quick word to what uh, Dr. Didat was saying a moment ago about the disciples going forth and preaching uh, Jesus' death. According to the record in the Holy Book, they did. Uh, ten days after he ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit came, and the first time they preached, they said, Men of Israel, Jesus of Nazareth, a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, so on and so forth. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose. You, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. The very next time that they were up to speak, you handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. So very quickly they were in fact preaching that. They were right or they wrong. They were deceived or, or uh, something very strange had, had, gone on, had gone on. Did Jesus claim to be God? You mean in his very own words. If you're looking for the expression, I say that I am God. Just those words, you do not find it. But at the time of Jesus' trial, when he stood before the Jewish authorities, they said to him, tell us, are you the son of the blessed one? Now, who is the blessed one, Mary or God? And Jesus said, I am. And they said, what further need do we have for proof? He has blasphemed, let him die. Blasphemy is taking to a human being that which uniquely belongs to God. And nobody knew that any better than the Jews. No people in those days were any more sensitive to that. And so, yes, Jesus claimed to be God three times in the Gospel of John. He makes the statement, except you believe I am, you will die in your sins. 
Before Abraham was born, I am. They took up stones to stone him, for they understood full well what he was saying. Why did they react that way to that language? Because of the Old Testament in which God says, my name is I am, I am that I am. And so yes, Jesus claimed to be God. Uh, did he ask his followers to worship him? If you mean, did he say to his followers, followers fall down and worship me? No, you do not find those words coming from the lips of Jesus in the Gospels. But you do find people falling down and worshiping him. And he accepted it. He did not say, get up. He did not say, you're mistaken. He did not say, leave. He did not say, that is inappropriate. He did not say, you're wrong. He accepted it. Ahmed Dida. Very, very interesting video. Um, people really have some good, good questions prepared to ask um, these people. I mean, this was very interesting to listen to. What are your thoughts on this? I actually have nothing to say concerning this. I'm just wondering uh, why didn't Jesus tell these people that were falling down to worship him to say, don't worship me. That's something that just I uh, like an answer to. Let me know what you think about this video. Make sure to comment in the section in the comment section below and we'll appreciate the feedback. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video. Thank you.